Imagine you're walking through the woods just enjoying your evening. Birds are singing, the crisp autumn air feels fresh, and then all of a sudden a huge UFO swings by, drops the sky off, and it screams. Then it looks at you waiting for a reply. How do you respond? Do you yodel back? Maybe try throat singing? Yodeling. Too late. As you were thinking, it jumps up and smushes you into the earth. Communication is hard, but Totem takes it to the extreme. Today, from itch.io, we're playing Totem, which was released in June of 2020 by the developer Shackles. In this game, we are an interpreter tasked with conversing with three big ol' metal aliens. The goal is to convince them to leave the Earth through their mode of conversation, but they also have personalities we have to work around too. The first alien, nicknamed Wrecking Ball because it is a ball that wrecks, has a split personality. One of which is purely emotional, and the other is purely intellectual. It only talks through glyphs, so communicating with this thing is like trying to read the walls of an Egyptian tomb. Next we have Creaker, who only communicates by a large horn in his throat. It basically just screams at you whenever it wants to talk. Yodely. It's also temperamental and lacks restraint, so be careful or, well... <laughs> The last alien we have access to is Cow, who's pretty patient and considers himself a philosopher, which, you know, kind of cringy, but they're not annoying about it. There's also a secret fourth alien, but that's all hush hush until we can successfully convince Wrecking Ball, Creaker, and Cow to get out of town. Okay, first babble is with the bipolar ball. We spawn into a disco show with Wrecking Ball providing all the lights. If this thing doesn't leave, at least you can plan a music festival around it. We walk up to the translator screen and Wrecking Ball jumps out of the ground, eager to communicate. Wrecking Ball seems to be a purely useful alien, which operates as a large database with two different personalities, to capture twice as much data by analyzing the same scenario from each of those perspectives. So, as you talk with Wrecking Ball, you might notice that it may repeat the same question or dialogue, but with two different intentions depending on the personality that we're talking with. The meaning of Wrecking Ball's glyphs are pretty easy to identify. So, a heart means love, a skull means death, and if a flash is a square, well, that means you. Which is great, because for the first half hour of me playing this game, I didn't realize that you were supposed to hit the escape key to find a translator's guide. This thing was flashing door eyes squiggly square, and I was like, yeah, for sure. Square eyes squiggly v dot square to you too, man. Working it out with Wrecking Ball is a good introduction to using the translator interface and guide. The routine is to look at what the alien said, translate it in the guide, and then look at your translation options on the screen. One important thing that you have to remember is these aliens are large pieces of space junk that really aren't afraid of the law, so they'll kill you if they get annoyed. Getting killed by Rick and Ball is kind of cool since they erupt into a plasma wave of blinding energy. Wouldn't that be great out just to explode when you get bored of talking to someone? After many, many attempts, we finally gaslight Wrecking Ball into thinking that we're pals. So Wrecking Ball activates its pistons and yeets itself into another part of the planet, destroying itself on impact. An odd thing to do when you don't get what you want, but whatever floats your boat. The next conversation that we have to conduct is with Creaker. Creaker bears a resemblance to this painting by Simon Stelhag titled The Procession, which actually inspired Shaggles to pursue development of this game in the first place. Shackles determined that if they were ever to face a creature like this, they wouldn't be able to kill it or run away from it. No, the only way out of a confrontation with this thing would be to talk to it? Maybe? I guess? There really isn't any other option. So, the idea for Totem was born. From what we know of Creaker, it lived with many others of its kind on a dark, deaf world where they controlled large swaths of land. Since the world they live on is so dark and silent, other creatures of that world have not so great senses of sight and hearing, so instead they communicate through other senses, like smell and touch. The Creakers, not wanting to be ignored, overpowered these flaws by developing a communication system so loud and obnoxious that they could be heard by any creature in a wider radius. Creaker is the most dangerous of the aliens, as this rage has to be actively managed throughout the conversation. To finish the objective, it's essentially a bounce of saying, you're so strong, to lower Creaker's rage, and then following it up with, you're weak as hell, to raise its rage. After a few minutes of talking, the third gauge reaches its peak, so we launch one last rod into Creaker, who runs away into the woods. Nobody has been able to hear its horn ever since, so it's presumed to be dormant. Sick. 
Two down, one to go. The last ceiling we have to deal with, Cow, has some conundrums with our convictions. Walking into the site, we see a big spinner thing, which is a bit frightening, but nothing that we're not used to. Another day, another dollar. We crack our dunks and get ready to talk to this circle thing. We soon realize we're barking up the wrong tree. We're not talking to this big spinner thing. We're using the big spinner thing to talk to an even more massive spinner thing. This massive amalgamation of gears and steel is going to determine our morals. If it doesn't like what it hears, or I guess spins, then it strikes the ground, causing a minor earthquake. Cow is a machine purposely built to test the morals of other civilizations. If it thinks that the civilization is selfish or greedy and a detriment to the existence of the universe, then they're determined to be unworthy. Our objective with this last creature is pretty simple. Cow is going to ask us five questions about philosophy, in particular about the philosophy of the universe. Cow must be a fan of baseball because after three strikes, we're out and we get smashed. There is also an added challenge of having to adequately lubricate the spinner. If it isn't lubricated from time to time, then it becomes erratic, confusing cow. As long as you give a sympathetic, reasonable answer, cow is satisfied. When I was recording footage, I was trying to intentionally lose, so I just randomly spun the spinner around, and cow is still satisfied with my answers, so I don't think they have the strictest criteria. Having successfully rid the earth of these alien creatures, we are granted one last case. Previously classified, we've proven ourselves worthy to confront Totem. Totem is a large, tall pole with a disfigured, gory head on the top. It appeared in the year 512 and has been spinning in place and emitting random electrical pulses ever since. The only way to communicate with Totem is to push a big red button that appears before it. While it's a ton of fun to press, we aren't given much of a clue on how communication should work with this. Thankfully, the actual solution to this level is very simple. Just waltz up to the thing and give it a poke. Though, that sends us into an existential trip where we learn that each of the aliens was actually sent to Earth to judge humanity. Wrecking Ball was sent to test how we can form relationships and respond under pressure. Honestly, poor marks here. Creaker was sent to see how we deal with powerful threats. Not very well. And then Cow landed on Earth to determine our morals and reasoning, which went pretty well, but I really had no clue what I was actually saying. This totem is a neuron of the universe, sent to connect all life forms to form a universal brain of creatures. By successfully navigating dialogue with our three alien pals, we have been added to this universal brain and will be called upon if there is ever a universal war for existence. Which, very cool, thanks for the invite, but if we have enemies that look like this, I think we should sit this one out. So that was Totem. This game was a lot of fun to make a video about since the dev Shaggles made a write up on the inspiration and work that went into the game, which was super interesting to read. If you want to play Totem, the link to the game on itch.io and to Shaggles' profile is in the description below. Shaggles has been pretty active, with their latest title coming out last June, so they'll have plenty of stuff for you to check out if you're interested. If you liked the video, I would appreciate it if you could drop a like, and feel free to subscribe if you want to keep up with future content. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. You're